name of Jesus. And God, the numbers are still high. God, people are still dying. God, we know that you're here. Come to the land, God. Send a wind of healing. Even in the land, God, send a wind of healing through the land on today, God. Go to the hospitals, God. Hospitals are full almost to capacity. God, go and eat you every room. For being the sacrifice, for the pain you went through. 
just for us. But you didn't stop at dying. You rose again for our justification. And God, we thank you. Hallelujah. That's my prayer today. That's my communion prayer. It is a thankful prayer unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we remember him even on today, the first Sunday of December. Amen. We're just grateful to God. As far as announcements are concerned, so much is going on in the land that the, the Church of God in Christ has commissioned a full schedule for consecration beginning on Tuesday. If you look at Church of God in Christ, cogic.com, www.com or .org, org www.cogic.org you will see all of the information and the schedule for this Tuesday for the Church of God in Christ. There's been a call by Bishop Blake that, the, that the everyone within the Church of God in Christ come together in prayer. So many leaders have passed. So many members have passed. So many loved ones have passed within the family of the Church of God in Christ. And usually we've had our convocation in November and so much is going on. But Bishop Blake has called for this last portion of the year a time of consecration. So this Tuesday has been set aside to have a nationwide uh, list of different events that will be happening. There's going to be prayers. There's going to be teachings. There's going to be consecration. So many different things are going to be involved. So we will change our schedule on Tuesday as far as prayer and is concerned. Our prayer at sundown will change. So pastor will come and give you direction on that. Wednesday night will be prayer at sundown at 6. But before prayer will be Bible study this Wednesday. On Thursday night will be our prayer service. Amen. So we're just thanking and praising God for another week. He has blessed us to see. So much is happening. So much is going on. I'm going to leave all that good stuff for the pastor to talk about uh, December 15th. I'll leave all that for him. But we're just grateful to God for another day that he has blessed us to see. We're grateful to God for you. So many of you have been reaching out and talking about how the prayers have been helping you and your families. You talked about how the services, even on Sunday, has helped your families. We praise God for each and every one of you. You that tune in to, whether you tune in on Sunday or through the week, we appreciate you, even on Facebook and on the phone line. We appreciate each and every one of you. Those that give on Givelify, we know that that is um, Elmwood Memorial Church of God in Christ, and you will see a photo of the church and our pastor. We appreciate those that give every Sunday faithfully to Givelify. And then the cash app is dollar sign Elmwood Memorial. And then those that say, I don't have that, I can just mail it. Mail it. We thank you for mailing in your contribution. 5048 Dr. Martin Luther King Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. We're grateful to God for each and everything that you have done. We thank you for helping us keep this church going. We appreciate all that you are doing. Some of you give out of love. Some people feel like they give out of obligation. You can give your money wherever you give it. We appreciate that you give it to Elmo Memorial. God bless you richly, each and every one that contribute to this church. We praise God for you. Amen. I'm going to sing a quick song. I will be out of the way because I want to hear what thus says the Lord. I shall wear a crown I shall wear a crown When it's all over when
tell the story of how I made it over. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Aren't we glad for the Lord on today? Yes, yes. Amen. We are just so glad for him and how he continuously watches over us and cares for us. Amen. Yes, and yes. Just, so much as I said is going on in this world, but amen. If we say this world is not our home. Nope. Amen. We are. Someone wrote a song, I'm living this life just so I can live again. And when I live again, amen, I'm not going to be living like I'm living now. Nope, nope. And I know some some people, uh, if you will, as I say this, it may have a little bit mixed up. You may look at people and feel like, oh, they're living really large. They're living really good. But we're not really going to live till we get over, amen, to glory. If we're able to live with our Lord and Savior forever. Where we'll be living in a land that is free of all kinds of diseases. That's free of all kinds of, free of sin. Yes. Amen. Don't have to worry about going out, amen, just taking an innocent little stroll or an innocent drive and worrying about somebody shooting you or worrying about anything of that nature, worrying about going, you know, leaving your house and worrying about somebody going inside and taking things from you. Don't have to worry about if somebody is dropping a package off for you on the front porch, worrying about somebody coming and taking it before you get out there to get it. Oh, glory be to God. We don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to worry about aches and pains in our bodies. We don't have to worry about headache, toe ache, or anything. But just giving glory and praise unto the Lord. Yay. Amen. And oh my God. And to get there and to know that when I get there, I'm going to be wearing a crown. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for Jesus. And I just want to know. I know everybody's going to get a crown. But I want to know how many jewels are going to be in your crown. Yes. Amen. We have to work for our jewels, if you will. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm thanking praise God. We're glad to be here. And I'm glad you chose to be to worship with us even on today here at the Elmwood. Amen. God is so good unto us and continues to bless us. Amen. Thoroughly. Amen. Richly. God continues to bless us here. And I'm just grateful. Amen. To, I'm grateful. Amen. I'm just grateful to the Lord for all that he has done and continues to do. Amen. In our lives. Do want to share thank you praise god for first lady buckner amen amen who has shared with us and, and by way of, of the service and sunday school and done so much we just appreciate her for being here with us today god bless her god bless amen brother lucas brown being with us sharing yes. his music ministry amen yeah. like amen he made us sound like we can sing and like we can preach yes a little bit amen he does a wonderful job okay. amen providing that we appreciate that Amen. We appreciate that. And I thank and praise God. My daughter is here. Praise God for her, for what she continues to do and blesses us. Amen. Bringing, if you will, this this uh, Facebook Live, amen, to you. You're able to see that because she is back there working that camera. So we appreciate her on today for being here with us. Amen. As was previously mentioned, there's so much that is going on. Amen. Going on within the life of our church. And many people do know, amen, we are a part of the Church of God in Christ. And one thing that you will learn and know about me, amen, is that I'm a person that does follow leadership. Amen. As was mentioned, our presiding bishop has called our denomination to a time of solemn assembly. Amen. A time of consecration and prayer. And that, of course, is taking place on this coming Tuesday. Amen. From 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. Yes, yes. We will be in fasting and prayer. Amen. I know that, as I said, we had talked about uh, doing a teaching uh, series on that. This just kind of came up on us. Amen. So we're going to, going to go ahead and go forth. I would share with you that if you are able to, if you are able to fast, if you're able to pray, amen, make sure that you do that on that day. Now, you may say, Brother Preacher, I'm not able to fast. Well, if you're not able to fast with us, pray with us. Yes. Amen. As I said, say it all the time, I believe Jesus himself said it. Couldn't you just wait one hour? Watch one hour while I pray. Amen. If nothing else, amen. Just keep a watch. Amen. Keep a watchful eye. Amen. Even over the saints, amen, as we go forth in our time of consecration to the Lord. As I keep saying, and we all have, spent, have mentioned, we are seeking the divine will of God. Amen. And we are in, in the midst of all of this. I know that, amen, that in the midst of this, we will be asking again for forgiveness. Amen. For God to heal this land. Amen. We know we this land needs to be healed. Amen. So I'm saying to you, amen, that if you would, amen, make preparations to fast and to pray, amen, on this coming Tuesday, December the 8th from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. 
And I know many of you are across the country that watch us are in different time zones. And that 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. applies to your time zone. Whatever time zone you're in. Don't try to get on California time. Don't try to get on New York time. Just stay on your time. Amen. And just go from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. As was mentioned, amen, I'm taking a little bit of time, amen, because this is a very important thing, amen, that on Kojic.org you will find, you can download, if you will, the schedule for the day. Because throughout the day, our general board members will be leading us in times of teaching throughout the day, amen, on this coming Tuesday. So make sure you get that schedule and you log on and are part of that. Do know that on that on as a part of that schedule, that at 2 o'clock p.m., amen, it's supposed to be 12 o'clock, amen, on, on the Pacific time, but it's 2 o'clock our time, that they have called for us as pastors, if you will, to pray at that particular time and to do that by way of conference call, Zoom, Facebook. So what we have done or will be doing on this Tuesday is our schedule will be adjusted. Normally we have prayer at 6 o'clock p.m., but we're going to be praying at 2 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon. So this coming Tuesday, be with us at 2 o'clock p.m. as we will be on Facebook and YouTube. We'll be going forth in our time of prayer as a part of the consecration. Amen. So make sure, amen, let, get that word out that we're going to be praying at 2 o'clock p.m. Amen. At 2 o'clock, we're going to be in our time of prayer that we will be coming together on Facebook. Amen. Again, we are praying for our national church. We're praying, as mentioned before, so many have gone on. Things are going on in this world. We are praying, amen, for the family of uh, Bishop uh, General Borman, Bishop Matthew Williams. We are praying for that particular family. Amen. That visitation is going on even as we speak. And we are praying for that family, for that church, that jurisdiction, and for our national church. Amen. The loss of passing, if you will, of our, one of our general board members. Amen. He definitely here at Elmwood has a connection here at Elmwood. Amen. When yours truly was appointed pastor here, amen, he was very, amen, he supported us financially. Amen. Gave us a very tangible financial gift to help us with this ministry. And so we, again, very, uh, we appreciate it. We are praying for that family. We're praying for our church. Also on that same note, amen, don't worry, I'm going to preach a bit. Amen. I'm going to preach just a little bit on today. But which I am just, uh, again, we are just grateful to God. We know that we are in the month of December. And we also know that here at Elmwood, amen, we again look at our recent history. Amen. We would know that on December the 15th was the date that I was appointed as pastor here at Elmwood on December the 15th, 2018. Amen. And of course, normally, out of last year, we had a wonderful time and celebration. We had a wonderful celebration, banquet, dinner. Amen. Brother Brown, I tell you, we, we, uh, it was supposed to have been a time of just, you know, fellowship and eating and that sort of thing. But the Lord came in. In the midst of that, in the midst of that banquet. Amen. And I tell you, the Lord got a hold. Amen. I began to preach a little bit, but I spoke and have remarks. I ended up preaching. Amen. And singing went forth. The anointing of God was throughout. The, he was there in that entire uh, session. And I just praise and thank God for that. Because that's what it was. It was about celebrating and giving God praise. For what he had done. And so I'm just grateful. I know that we can't again gather because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We would not want to put anybody in any kind of jeopardy at all. We did not even intend to have anything when we knew that this was going to last at this throughout this point in time. But I did want to make sure that we took the opportunity to say thank you to those who have continued to support this ministry, those who helped us, amen, throughout this year. And so again, we just want to say we appreciate you and we thank you, amen, for what you have done, amen. And later on today, amen, we will be posting a video, amen, a two-year video, amen, to kind of, if you will, celebrating our journey that we have had here. And I want to appreciate it publicly, amen, I know I've already done it, amen, if you will, at the home, but I want to publicly thank my daughter for putting that together. Amen. That video, amen, is going to be out there on Facebook. Amen. So continue to look for it. Amen. You will see, amen, that, that that she put together. And I just appreciate her for doing that. Amen. When I first looked at a, a, at a draft of it, Brother Brown, I didn't think it could happen. Amen. But it brought some tears to my eyes. Amen. I just thank and praise God for that and for what she has done 
amen, putting that together in celebration of that because it is something to celebrate. We think, it, like I said, it's not celebrating us personally per se in that regard or, or what all that they have done, that sort of thing. But again, it's giving glory to God for what he has done because everything that happens, amen, all the glory, as I say it all the time, it all belongs to God. Amen. So uh, again, I appreciate you all. Amen. The members here. Amen. I was just sitting here today and I was just thinking about certain things. And I said, you know, one thing that I said, you know, I, there's so many things that I desire of God and, and have before him even on today. And I know many of you have requests before him on today. But one thing is I was sitting here, sitting here in service. Amen. It really kind of struck heavy on me that, my God, I will be so glad when all the saints can get back together. Yeah. I will be so happy. Amen. I know that you all, I know my mother boy, I see, I know you're watching us on today, Sister Hopper, Deacon Hopper. I know you all are watching us even online today. But I tell you, I will be so glad when the time comes that we can all come back together. Amen. And worship in person. Amen. As opposed to even over Facebook. I will be so glad to see you all. Amen. So we were praying anxiously for that time to come that we can come back together and worship amen the lord together amen so we're getting ready now to go to the word of god so god we thank you we praise you on this day the life of god and for strength thank you how you've watched over us how you've kept us even up to this time god now is time that we would share your word with the people of god lord i pray that you would give me what to say give me how to say it. lord let your word go forth with free course let your people be encouraged and be uplifted, O oh God, even on today and even in the midst of these perilous times. God, just let your people's heads be uplifted. That person, O oh God, who does not know you in a part of their sins, let them, O oh God, make up today in their mind that this is the day I want to receive salvation. Lord, I just praise you again. Just bless me, O oh God, the more. Continue to strengthen us and keep us encouraged. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. We're going to the book of Isaiah on today. We're only going to read uh, three verses. And as I said, I, I promise you I will not be very long because I believe that even once I announce the subject, I believe you should be able to go from there and hopefully get what it is that the Lord would have for us to receive on today. Isaiah 38, 6 through 8. And it says, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Uh -huh. And I will defend this city. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, 10 degrees backward. So the sun returned 10 degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. I thought this came from verse 7. It says, And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken. And my subject is simply this. God is going to do that thing. Okay. That's my subject on today. And I'm saying, I, I, I just, amen, I, 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 when the Lord gave that to me, it just did something to me. Mm -hmm. It really kind of happened here on yesterday when I was here doing some work here in the church. And I began to think about, you know, sometimes the Lord will show you things and he'll tell you things. Sometimes even without praying, God will just speak to you and just tell you certain things. And he began to, uh, you know, as I was in here, I was really happy. I was excited in my spirit and excited now in my soul. And I went on and I began to study and began to read these things. And as I turned upon this particular passage, that just resonated with me that God is going to do that thing. And what I'm really saying, I said, Lord, what are you really saying? I said, I said Lord, how am I really going to share this with the people? And the Lord said, well, you know that there are many, many people, even on today, that that subject should have resonated with. And some it may not have resonated with, and maybe it's going to take just a little bit of explanation. And that is that simply you must know and understand that there are many people, if you will, there are several different people, I believe, as saints of God, who have been praying and have been praying and have been praying. 
You have been asking God for something for a long time. And not only that, you may have even gotten a response from God that he was going to do it. But time has passed and sometimes things, circumstances may have changed, amen, from when you even first asked and made that request. Uh -huh. And sometimes it may have been that, that in the midst of that, that somehow that, that, that you have either gotten to the point where you forgot about it, you discarded it, or you basically said, well, that's okay if he does not do it. But I want you to know today that God told me to make sure I let the people know that I'm going to do that thing. Yes, yes. Yes, I know now, now knowing all of that, I know that thing is going to be different for everybody. Everybody, I don't believe, is always praying for the same thing. This is why I'm speaking to you and even sharing with you as an individual to take this word to heart. Because I know many of us are praying, I uh, know many of us are praying for sometimes the same thing. We have something even in common. When I think about it, as I mentioned before, about the church, if you will, us going on consecration. Amen. I believe that for the most part, people that do have their own individual requests and things before God. But I believe that the center point of a lot of it is, is that Lord let this, this pestilence in our land pass over. Let it go on and get out of the way. Let us get back to a sense of normalcy. Mm -hmm. I want you to know, even in the midst of that, God is still going to do that thing. Okay. But I want to reach down and grab someone, a man who has something that they have not shared with anybody but God. And nobody else knows about it. God is yet saying to you on today, I'm going to do that thing. Don't get discouraged and despondent in the midst of it. Amen. I was speaking to someone before, even on this week, I had talked to them about something and they made a comment to me. They said, they said to me simply, in, a, in essence, that yes, I promised something and I don't make any empty promises. Amen. I was just calling, just following up on something and that was what they indicated to me. And I said to myself, as it comes to God, I want you to know that God, God is the same way. He is not going to make any empty promises. If God has said it, God is going to do it. And it's up to us, even at this day and time, to stand on it and know that God is yet going to do that thing, amen, in your life. I don't want you to get discouraged by what is going on. Don't want you to get this, uh, if you will, as I said, discouraged. Don't want you to get upset and throw your hands up and say, what in the world? You know what? I'm, I'm just going to let it go. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm not going to stand on it anymore. I know what he said, but I'm just going to let it go. Amen. But I said again, I say to you, amen, don't you let go. God is going to do that thing. Yeah. And as even a missionary buck, I mean, I think she caught on to something in Sunday school when she made the statement about, you know, that, that God sometimes has told us certain things and, and looked like it hasn't been coming. She didn't quite like, say it like this, but what she ended up saying was this, that the fact that you cannot die until that promise has been fulfilled. Yeah. And if nothing else, I say it all the time and I say it again, when God makes us promises, you ought to get excited, especially for something in the future, because really what it's saying is, you're not going to die right about now. Mm -hmm. Because God has made you a promise, and God does not lie. He's not a man that he should lie, mm -hmm. neither the son of man that he should repent. Yeah. If God has said it, he's going to do it. I don't care if you're 90 years old walking around here, oh my God. And as they would say, amen, you, you, as they say, almost one foot in the grave and another foot on a banana peel. If God has said to you there's something that I'm going to roll, I'm going to bring about up in your life. And if it takes 10 years, oh my God, you better know you're not going to die until the Lord fulfills that promise yeah. he has made unto you. Yeah. Amen. I'm saying to you again, as I said, I want you to understand that in the midst of everything, I told you I'm not going to preach long because the message is very simple. God is going to do that thing. I don't care what it is. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how impossible it may seem to be in your life. It may seem to be the only thing, the only way that, that this promise or this thing can be brought about is that God works a miracle. Yeah. And I'm just saying to you even on today that God is yet going 
to do that thing. Whether it means in your sight or in the sight of other people, it's a miracle. Does not matter in mean, the sight of others, it's impossible. It doesn't matter in the sight of what your natural eyes are seeing that you can't even see that thing being worked out. Yeah. You can't even see that blessing coming. I want you yet to know God is yet going to do that thing. Yes, yes. You cannot, oh my God, praise God. You cannot go on what you see, but you must go on your faith. You must walk, amen, in faith. And the way you walk in the faith in what God has promised you is you've got to stand on it. Yeah. If God has told you he's going to do it, it makes no difference if 10,000 folk tell you to give up and tell you to turn around, walk out, or what have you. Amen. If God has told you he's going to do it, he is going to do it. Yeah, yeah. I say all the time, who are you going to listen to anyway? Praise God. It makes no difference Amen. what people say, what people do, how they want to say that it's not going to be, how they might want to say you're wasting your time, how they might want to say that you need to give up, how they might want to say that you've got no business holding on. I'm yet telling you if God has told you, yeah. my God, if God has told you something, mm -hmm. you can stand on it. No matter how impossible it may seem. Yes. As I say all the time, amen, it, it, for the Chandler, Deacon Chandler, it, 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 if we didn't have things impossible that we could not work out ourselves, what would be the use of God being here? Mm -hmm. What would be the need of him being here to help us? As I say all the time, if you really think about it, you can't even make yourself read. You can't make your heart beat. God is the one doing all of that. Yeah. Amen. God is the one who is maintaining our help and maintaining our strength. And that's why I even said before, amen, as I said when I read and think about even with this disease and things that are going on in our life, that's why I can stand flat-footed and tell you just like this, amen, that does not matter if corona, amen, gets, continues to rent and rage all the way through this land. Mm -hmm. If God has made you a promise that has not been fulfilled yet, I want you to know COVID can't take you out of here until I mean, the fact that, that promise has been fulfilled. Oh, yeah. glory be to God. Yeah. Even in the midst of that, that's why I even said before, and I said, amen, with conviction in my heart, and I speak to the saints of God again, amen, as a matter of encouragement. Some of you may have lost folks, amen, to COVID. And I said, coming into this, I said, if it comes to the point that someone leaves here as a child of God, and maybe COVID was the one that we want to say was the culprit that took them out of here. I want you to know they didn't get out of here until God said it was time for them to go. Yeah. God was the one who had him in the last say so, and it just happened to be their time to go. It does not matter. Oh my God, thank you, Jesus. God is the one who has the last say so yes. in the matter. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And so we know we have different things that happen. And I know today we're talking about Hezekiah. And I know we all get excited when we talk about Hezekiah. And we talk about what all he went through. We know that Hezekiah, amen, if you will, amen, was a leader, amen, was a king at that point in time. And we know that he had a condition in his body. Uh -huh. Yes, Isaiah visits him. And you all know how he tells him that he needs to set his house in order. In other words, get your affairs together. Get your stuff, amen, whoever that you want to leave the car to. Make sure you put it in writing who you're going to leave the car to. Mm -hmm. Make sure you put it in writing who you're going to leave all that gold and silver that you got laid up at. Make sure that you've got, if you will, your funeral arrangements, your, who you want to sing as a part of the funeral, who you want to do the eulogy. Make sure you get it all together. Set your affairs in order because you're getting ready to die. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this message came straight from heaven through the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah, amen, praise God, had enough sense, or I should say in his mind, that Isaiah said, I've delivered the message and I'm walking out of here. Uh -huh. Hezekiah had enough sense. Hezekiah said, that's all right, you did what you said that you had to do. I thank you for bringing the message because now, amen, I know that there is something that I have to do. Yeah. Hezekiah, I believe, said that before I, I think about getting my house in order, I know that day by day I've gone to the temple and I have been praying. Oh, no. And the Bible, yet it says, I said, people say that, 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 that this, amen, disease, if you will, that Hezekiah had, some likened it to either a form of leprosy or a form of cancer. Yeah. He had boils, if you were, that were on his body. He decided that, praise God, that, that I heard the message, and I'm not mad at the message. I believe it even 
say, God, you know what? I'm not even mad at you because I guess it's just my time. And God, I'm going to come to you as humbly as I can. I know I, I know I can put a resume before you and tell you I've done everything that you've asked for me to do. But God, I want you to know I'm, I'm just not ready to walk out of here just yet. Yes, yes. The, 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 right now, we are in a situation where that we are in the hand, if you will, the king of Assyria. Uh -huh. There's so much that I want to do, so much things I have that, that are in my mind that I would like to see. I'd like to see us delivered. I would like to see us bought out. Uh -huh. I don't feel like going out in this map. I don't feel like, if you will, as some people would say in the basketball world, I don't want to go out on the bottom. But I want to go out on the top. Yeah. I want to go out knowing that, that I led the people and, and that when I led, when I left them, I left them delivered. Yeah. I believe that's what he was saying in his heart. So he says, God, I, I, I heard the message that was sent. So God, I, I, I'm not, as I said, I, I'm not looking anyplace else. I'm not going to fight with Isaiah, but God is between me and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he turned his face to the wall. Yes, yes. And we know that what happened was that God, amen, does everything decently and in order. Yeah, yeah. Because God could have spoke right to Hezekiah right then in that prayer. Yeah. You all know heaven, God spoke to you in prayer when you've been praying. Sometimes God will turn right around and give you an answer. Yeah. God could have did the same thing, but had he done the same thing in heaven, then Isaiah may have questioned. Why did you send me there to tell the man he's going to die and yet you're going to let him leave? So I said I was walking through the courtyard. And while in the prayer, it ended up in Hezekiah's room, prayer was going forth. But God began to talk to his prophet and said, wait just a minute. You've got to take a message back up to Hezekiah. And you've got to tell him that I've heard his prayer. You've got to tell him I'm going to do something that only I can do. I'm going to add 15 more years on to his life. Thank you, Jesus. And so he goes up there and Isaiah tells Hezekiah about, about the prophecy. But if you look in 2 Kings, you'll find out more things that happened after that. Because what happened was Isaiah was told from God that what you got to do is you got to get some salve together. And he told him how to make it and how to apply it to Hezekiah's borders. God for Jesus. And Hezekiah went ahead and did what God told him to do. But in the midst of things, he began to say here on today. A little bit of doubt creeped into his mind. And he said, will God really do this? Is God really going to add 15 years unto my life? And he said, am I really going to go up to the temple and pray? Because I believe that his condition had him and he couldn't really get out and go. Is God really going to heal my body? He was asking Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah said, well, Hezekiah, let me give you a sign here that God is really going to do this thing. He said, you know there's a sundial out there that, that, they, that Ahaz had built. If you look out on the sundial, he says, God can show you about time. He said, do you want God to move the sundial forward 10 degrees? Or do you want him to move it backward 10 degrees? Well, Hezekiah said, well, you can hear. He's talking about putting 15 years on to my life. It wouldn't be nothing for the sun now to move forward. Because time always moves forward. Great God from on high. But he said, if God really is God, and if God is really going to do this thing, show me a sign and let him make the sun now go backward. In other words, that God us back in time on this day and God my God who is outside of time yes Lord said let me show you I can control time God looked down at the sun and said son I know that you have a schedule that you've got to keep but son you've got to understand I have authority over you and over time so son, I need you to go back 10 degrees so Hezekiah will know and Hezekiah will understand that I am going to do that thing for him. And God allowed the son to go back 10 degrees. And so now Hezekiah, he knows now that God is going to do that. And I'm saying to you, Today, as you stand there, or as you sit there, pondering 
you today, right now, in the spirit realm. I've turned the sundown back 10 degrees to let you know that I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm telling you now, in the midst of it all, you hold on, hang on in there. God is going to do that for you. Whatever he's promised you, stand on the promise. God is going to bring you out. God is going to deliver you. God is going to heal your body. God is going to open up doors. God is going to make ways for us. I'm speaking to Elwood. God is about to open some doors. miracles. God is going to bring folk in here throwing their hands up saying what must I do to be saved? God is yet with us. God is going to do that. He's going to do that. Whatever it is, that thing. God's going to do that thing. He's going to do that thing. God's going to do that thing. Oh, yes, he is. Hold on, saints. Don't give up. Yes. God is going to do that thing. Yes, yes. Whatever you need, oh my God. That thing, that thing. Whatever He's promised you, that thing. He's spoken out. He said, I'm going to do it for you. Mm. Oh my God. Yeah, hey, bless Him. Bless Him today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it looks bad, but see, it, I, I sit like this, Dickie Chapman. If God always blessed us and did things for us that we asked for, when things are always going good, it really wouldn't look to some of us like it was a miracle uh -huh. or like it was something that God could have done. Because some of us would get high minded and be like, well, look what I did. Or, or this only happened because of this, that, and the other. But God can do some things. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think even about the late, the late Bishop Mason in our church. And how he had a desire to build a place for the saints. He knew, first of all, that, that there would be no place to hold us. Yes. But he built it in wartime. When metal materials, iron, was hard to come by. It was being rationed out because they were in war. But God blessed him to be able to build in the midst of a war. Yes. When nobody else was getting materials, the church of God in Christ got materials. And I'm saying to you even now, some of you may be saying, well, they're not doing this. They're not doing that. Banks aren't really loaning out money. Mm. Businesses are closing up day by day. Some of you may be sitting there saying, contemplating, I want to expand my business. I want to do something else. And we know that if we look at it from an economic standpoint, they tell you now is not the time. Uh -huh. And they would almost say it looks kind of bleak for me whenever that we would come out and be able to do things such as that. Uh -huh. But I want you to know God is yet saying to you, don't you dare give up because I promised that to you and I'm going to do that. Yeah. And I'm not confined by this economy. I'm not confined by what's going on. I'm not restricted in any kind of way. I can do whatever I want to do. Whenever I want to do it. Hold on, saints. Don't you dare give up. God is going to do that thing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Bless your name. I just want to agree with you on today. I want to agree with you on today that God is going to do it. God, I thank you. I praise you for this day. I thank you for this message, oh God. That you're going to do that thing. Lord, many people have a thing. Some people even have plural. They got things that you have promised and said to them you were going to do. Things even now that since the time they asked for it and the time that you stated they were going to have it, things have either gotten idle or have even gotten worse. But God, I know that you are a person of your word. You don't give empty promises. Yes. So, Lord, we yet stand on that today. And we yet say, God, you're going to do that thing. So, God, I pray that you would yet keep your saints encouraged. Don't let no one give up. Don't, don't let anyone get despondent and throw the towel in at this point in time. Because, God, you're going to do that thing for them. And, God, we're just going to thank you even in advance. They say every day is a day of thanksgiving. But I heard another word, even God that I even read about this week. And it talked about that there's another word besides Thanksgiving. 
And I know it's a word that you require of us. And it's called thanks living. Living in a time of thanks. Oh my Thank God. You. Oh, glory to God. Not just giving and not just coming from our mouth. But every action speaks of thanks. Thanks living. Lord, help us to live in a thankful way. Oh God, in the midst of everything you're doing right now, Lord, help us yet to say thank you for what you're doing and thank you for doing that thing for us. God, we praise you. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That person may not know the Lord and pardon your sin. Amen. It's very simple. The Lord has done that thing already. He came and died on the cross for your sin. Amen. Very simply said to you that, that it can be done. What is this? The word is not the It's right there in your mouth. It is the word of faith Hallelujah. that we preach. You've got to exercise some faith and open up your mouth and confess him. Amen. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And by faith you can be saved. Just real quickly here before we go off. Just say with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you today for letting me live to see this time and to move forward with this opportunity today. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that God sent you to die on the cross for my sins. I further believe that God raised you the third day for my justification. And Lord, I believe now that according to your word, I am saved. Amen. If that's you, amen, just begin to give him thanks and praise him for saving you even on today. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Amen. This time, Mr. Buckner is going to come. Sign us off and just be encouraged and remember, amen, no matter what you're going through, what you're dealing with, God is going to do that thing. Amen. God bless. What more? Could he do?